Hello, take a look at the scholarship on your screen. Fully funded Masters by Research, that's the MRES, and PhD in Australia for all disciplines and for international students. This is what 38,500 Australian dollars and this scholarship opened on the 17th of June and is closing on the 31st of July, as you can see. So this is the scholarship we're looking at today, fully funded, master's and PhD international student, 38,500. So let's get in without any further delay. But just a minute, if you're new, you're welcome. But where have you been? There are lots of videos already on this channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world. So look around. I'm sure you'll find something that catches your interest. Tell your friends, tell your family members. And of course, if you're a returning viewer, a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. Thanks for the constant support. And I hope you get a scholarship sooner than later. Before we dive into the video of today, or to the scholarship of today, let's get some words from our sponsor, Brilliant. Data is life. We can hardly make significant progress in our academic and career development without some knowledge of quantitative data analysis. And this is true for all fields, whether in the practical sciences, social sciences, or humanities. That is why I'm happy to introduce you to our sponsor of this video, Brilliant. With Brilliant, you can learn amazing quantitative skills through easy to follow tutorials and at your own pace. The courses have been designed to equip you with easy to learn skills, which will boost your academic and professional pursuits. Check Brilliant today with a 30 day free trial and a 20% off by registering through the link in the description box and in the comment section below. Get ahead of the competition, register with Brilliant today. So back to the scholarship. This scholarship is at Macquarie University in Australia. And there are actually a number of them. So let me show you how I actually got to this page. I actually found the scholarship. I actually went through this database for scholarships. So I just said research scholarships or graduate scholarships, Macquarie um, University. And here I changed this tab to international students. Now there are about 13 different scholarships for international students. So just scroll down and see what they cover. But a number of them are field specific or topic specific. Like the first one here is about building robots. Not everyone is into robot building. So what do you do? So what I would do is to look for generic scholarship, that's scholarships for every field, apart from these very niche scholarship. But if these ones like building robots or neurodegeneration, if it applies to you, of course, go for it as well. But I'll be going for the one that is open to all candidates from different disciplines. So let's go to the second tab and see. These are also quite specific scholarships. Then I found one, the International Scholarship Round, and it's not for any particular field, it's for all fields. So I would open the tab for this one. Oh, I've opened the tab already. That was the first tab we looked at. So this is the first one, the International Scholarship Round. And let's see if we get another one. There's another one just right below, and it's called the Road to Research Scholarship. So let's open this one as well. But this one is for Masters or Masters by Research MRES. And then is um, October, it closes in October, um, the last year of October. Why the first one we looked at closes in July. So keep um, tab on the different deadlines. So let's see what they, what how to apply for them and what they require. So let's begin with this one, the International Scholarship Round. This is both for masters and PhD, as we saw in the intro of the video. So let's scroll down and get more info. So of course you're meant to read this on your own and it's just about your criteria, what you're looking for and things like that. So read, for the sake of this video, we are breathing through. So let's scroll down and see how do we apply for this scholarship. 
So it's saying that in your application, so why submitting a generic application for either a master's by research or a PhD, you should select international research scholarship. That is how they know that you're interested in this scholarship. So remember, when you're applying for admission, select international research scholarship. So let's go to the admissions page. So these are the different instructions on the admissions page. Some of these are just reiterating what we've seen earlier. The tuition fees, living allowance to cover and every other thing. Um, overseas student insurance as well is also covered as you can see here. Um, let's scroll down a little bit more. Um, these dates here are a little bit confusing. So this is saying closed 1st of March. But remember, when we saw it earlier, it said closed on, the, I think, early July. So which one do we go with? I think this is for the first round that happened um, earlier this year. So what we saw initially is for the second round, which is still open. This is the page we started. It's still open. And as you can see, application opened 17th June and then close um, 31st July. So we're still, it's still open, we can still apply. So do not mind the state. So applying for a scholarship, you click on this. So this is it. You click on this tab as well and begin your application. And then they require two references and then indicate, let's say you indicate the scholarship reference number. You might be wondering, what is the scholarship reference number? Um, I think we'll return to the page we started again. There's usually a reference number. I think this is the reference you're going to put there. Although these are more like letters than numbers, but hey, that is what was written here, reference number. So let's go back. So that's what we're applying for, and the guidance are also here. But then, quickly, before you even start applying, remember this is a research scholarship. So you're either applying for a research master's or a PhD, which is already by research, by default. So what do you do? To, to apply for these research programs, you need a supervisor. It's very important. In fact, if you start your application without a supervisor, your application will just be thrown into the dustbin. And a number of people here, unfortunately, on this channel are still making that mistake. I get people in the comment section saying, oh, I'm trying to navigate the application process already. I'm about to submit my application. I'm like, how is that possible? This video just came out and you're already submitting your application. Have you contacted a supervisor? Have you gotten a green light from a supervisor before you're even submitting an application? So that is what you need to do first before you even start um, submitting your application. So we'll find a supervisor and there's already a tab here. Find a supervisor. So what you're trying to do here is trying to look for somebody who's, um, whose research interests align with yours. So you're finding, trying to look for somebody whose research interests align with yours and who can supervise you essentially while you're doing your research. So I'm clicking on this tab, find a supervisor. And I think here you'll get the different names of the different experts. So what you do here is to type your field of specialization. So let's say climate, climate change. Type in here climate change and then click on it and see what comes out. So this is very important, guys. Take time to look for professors in your fields, working in your field. So these are the different people who have some kind of research in climate change. Then you narrow it down to the particular ones in your area of research or in your area of specialization. And what do you do? You send them an email, introduce yourself, introduce your academic professional background, tell them what you want to work on. So usually you're meant to have like a topic in mind that you want to work on. And for a number of universities, you also have to come with them. Um, Submit your CV, submit your transcripts, attach them to the email. And if possible, a research proposal. There's also a video already on this channel on how to write a research proposal. So it's just about what do you want to research? What's your topic? What's the question? What's the gap in the literature? What's the method? I think a very short two-page research proposal can, can do at least initially and then you can develop it along the line and before you submit your application. So it's very important you find a supervisor in your area of interest, 
in your area of specialization. So you can also say public health. Also say public health and see what comes out. I think my internet is a little bit slow today, but that's fine. So these are some of the people working in an area as close to public health. So what you do, do your own research, click on their different tabs and see which one works in your particular area of research and then send them an email. So this is very important. Most times you have to get a yes from them before you rush into submitting an application either for admission or for scholarship. It's very important. And um, most people miss this, um, this, this um, important step. And please do not make that mistake. It's very important. So that is it. Let's return to this page. Let's see. So this page will back here about um, the application portal. Just click on this and the application portal will come up. I think this is it here. This is the application portal. You can register and begin your application. And then there are other things we probably need to um, look at together, like the English language test. They haven't said much about it here, but I think most times they give a waiver for those who have already studied in the English language. But it's also always a good thing to find out. And if it is not clear, send them an email and see and ask, hey, do I need to submit this? Do I need to submit that? I already studied an English language. Do I need an English language um, certificate. So what you can do is um, look for those documents they often ask for, the English language um, certificates, see whether it's necessary or not. You can always type in the search bar, English requirements. So English is meant to be capital letter, by the way. And see what comes up for English language requirements. So remember, we started with the first um, scholarship. Remember, there are two of them, and they have a similar application process as well. So we'll be checking the other one quickly after we clarify this. So English language requirements, so check this and see what they require from you. Hopefully, they give a waiver for those already studied in the English language. So these are the different tests. Other approved evidence, let's see. There are some countries here where they might give a waiver. And I'm looking very closely at the list and I've said my country here already. Although they said it's a case by case basis. So it might be a good thing to have a letter from your university saying, hey, this girl, this guy studied in the English language and um, the course was entirely taught in English. There'll be no need for any of the English language um, test or assessment. So a number of countries are already on this list and I think you'll be able to get um, a waiver as well if your country is there. So that should be all for now. So it's fully funded um, masters and PhD. So remember this one before we go. This is called the Road to Research Scholarship. So one of the scholarships we fished out at the beginning of the video. And this is just for masters. And the application process is quite similar to what we've seen already. So it is important to check um, the different, how to apply the different requirements as well on your own. This is just to water your interest and show you what is out there um, in the first place. So dig up and see what you can get for yourself. So as usual guys, we cannot wait to celebrate you. There are many other videos already on this channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world. So if you want to check out more, please look around. That's Poland, whether it's the UK, videos are coming about the US as well, other parts of Europe, other parts of the world, videos are also coming. So please stay in touch by subscribing. And as usual guys, we cannot wait to celebrate you. So get to work. Start putting your documents together and I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now. Cheers.